Good afternoon and welcome to the IUPUI School of Science Forensics and Investigative Science JAG Day. We're excited to have you here to learn more about what it'll be like to study forensics at IUPUI. My name is Lori Hart and I'm the Associate Director of Undergraduate Enrollment for the School of Science. My contact information is on your screen and I wanna encourage you to contact me with any questions you have about the School of Science from visiting to applying to accepting your offer of admission. Now the School of Science is one of two Purdue University degree granting schools here at IUPUI. You will be studying in our four science buildings on our campus, including our brand new Innovation Hall, which boasts many new state-of-the-art science labs and classrooms. We have nine academic programs here at IUPUI in the School of Science, biology, chemistry, computer science, earth sciences, forensics, math, neuroscience, physics, and psychology. And our students are involved in over 500 campus organizations and over 30 science clubs and interest groups, such as Forensics Club and Pre-Med Club. But you're encouraged to join any of our science organizations, no matter what your major. Our Forensics Club is well known for their yearly murder mystery dinner, and we'll talk more about that today. But if you enjoy hiking and caving, you might want to join the Earth Sciences Club. Or in computer science, you can help design and program a gaming cabinet or help care for plants in our greenhouse through biology club. There is truly something for everyone. And the School of Science is invested in your success, providing free tutoring from experienced tutors in select science courses in biology, chemistry, computer science, math, physics, and psychology to supplement your course content. Now we understand that you have many options where you can study science, but I wanted to share with you the advantages to studying science at IUPUI. First of all, we're a school of science as opposed to a school of arts and sciences, which allows us to focus all of our time and resources to our passion, science and math. Furthermore, our pre-professional and career advising office called Science Preps focuses only on science and has created relationships with the employers that hire and the graduate and professional schools that admit science students. They will provide you with expert help in resume writing, internship and full-time employment searches and professional school preparation and applications. Next, our location in downtown Indianapolis provides you with many advantages. Living and learning in downtown Indy is fun. We have the Indianapolis Zoo, museums, the Indiana Repertory Theater, the Indianapolis Colts, the mall, and many great restaurants all within walking distance of our campus. In fact, just this week, we've had the NCAA tournament here and being downtown has been a lot of fun. But Nearby, we have many companies also, such as Eli, Eli Lilly and Salesforce and city, county and state agencies, such as the Indiana State Crime Lab, who hire our students for internships and provide job shadowing opportunities. We also have five hospitals that are on or adjacent to our campus, as are the IU Schools of Medicine, Dentistry and Law, providing you access to amazing volunteer shadowing research and internship opportunities. Third, you'll be immersed in a close-knit science community. Here you will find academically focused science students who enter IUPUI with GPAs and test scores above the all IUPUI average. You'll find your people here in study groups, student organizations, and in the many social opportunities available to you. This year, US News and World Report named IUPUI number 49 in the nation for our commitment to undergraduate teaching. Our faculty is committed to undergraduate education. And what that means for you is that the majority of your classes will be taught by full-time faculty and you'll find our professors to be approachable and accessible with weekly office hours for students. And last, you'll find amazing opportunities within science to get involved in research as early as your freshman year and see the real world contribution of your classroom knowledge. Now you'll, to get involved, all you need to do is reach out to professors in science whose research interests you and ask them what you need to do to get involved. Uh, many of the opportunities are paid or can be completed for college credit. At IUPUI, you have endless options available to you. You choose the living situation that's best for you, on campus, a nearby apartment, or commuting from home. If you're an admitted student who is interested in living in one of our four residence halls, I encourage you to apply to housing now to secure your place on campus. There are still spots available, but it is filling fast now that it has been announced that classes will be returning to on campus in the fall. Housing contracts will begin to be sent out on April 1st to your IUPUI email account. They're always sent out on Thursdays from April 1st through June in the order that they were received. 
if you've applied for housing, you'll want to start checking your IUPUI, you, IUPUI email account every Thursday to see if your contract has arrived. Once arrived, you have only until the following Monday to accept. And if you'd like to live with other science, technology, engineering, and math students who are taking the same classes as you, you can sign up to live on the STEM floor in North Hall. You'll find it under residence-based learning communities in your housing application. And if you've already applied, you can go in and update that preference and it will not affect your application date. To learn more about housing or to apply, you can go to housing.iupui.edu. Now I invite you to visit us and take a student-led tour of the School of Science and see where you'll be studying. We offer in-person tours every Thursday and Friday this spring. You can tour only the School of Science or you can pair it with an IUPUI campus tour. We have a JAG day like this for all nine of our academic units. Tomorrow is our last one focusing on the Earth Sciences majors of Environmental Science and Geology. However, we have all of our JAG days recorded and we'll have them all up on our IUPUI Science YouTube channel. Information on science visits and these recorded JAG days can also be found at science.iupui.edu slash visit, or you can email me at science at iupui.edu with any questions. And I wanted to let you know that committed students can register for orientation beginning on March 29th, which is Monday. So you can get in and start your online modules and you will uh, be able to register early and meet with your advisor to select your classes for fall so that you can have the best times available to you for uh, lab times. And you'll also wanna follow at IUPUI Science on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter to learn more about our students and faculty as well as all the exciting opportunities available to you in science. Now in a few minutes, we'll have forensic students, Samantha, Dustin, and Haley here to answer any questions you have. So stay tuned after our forensics department presentation to hear from them. I wanna remind you that you can ask any questions you have for me uh, or our faculty or student panels by clicking on the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. We want to answer your questions. So please ask your questions as you think of them during the presentations and we'll answer them all at the end. Now I'm pleased to introduce Forensics Chair and Professor Dr. Christine Picard to speak to you more about the curriculum, resources and research of the Forensics Department at IUPUI. Uh, welcome Dr. Picard, you can share your screen now. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I hope everyone is doing well. Um, and let me, I'm going to keep this short because I'd rather answer questions from, from you all. Um, but I do want to talk about this a little bit. You're seeing my screen okay, right, Lori? Okay. Yes. Good. <laughs> all right. So the Forensic and Investigative Sciences Program, and we refer to it as FIS, which is what I'm going to call it from here on out because it, it is a little bit of a, uh, a mouthful. Um, so a little bit about who we are and who makes up the program. And um, so the academic advisor, as well as program coordinator, so she does everything, is Amy Mighty. Um, and uh, I, I may be biased, but she is literally the best advisor you could ask for. Um, she cares so deeply for your success um, that, uh, you know, she, if, if, if she's having a hard time getting a hold of you, she'll, she'll, she won't give up. Let me put it that way. Um, and she just wants you to be really successful. Uh, we have what's called an academic specialist, which is Donna Ruskowski. So Donna actually spent 26 years as a uh, forensic chemist for, with the Indiana State Police. And uh, lucky for us, she now brings her expertise to us in the forensic science program as a full-time uh, faculty member. Um, and so she's just an amazing resource for the forensic chemist. Plus she knows lots and lots of people. We have two senior lecturers, um, or either senior lecturers or lecturers, uh, but Gina Longino Smoller has been with the program longer than anybody else. She was one of the, the starting few. Um, and she teaches uh, many of the introductory forensic science um, classes. Uh, as well as microscopy and some other uh, specialty. Uh, her background is chemistry. And then we have uh, Ryan Eller, who just joined us. His background is biology, and so he teaches some courses, um, including forensic biology um, for uh, the undergraduates. And then there's four full-time research faculty. 
um, which includes myself. Um, but Dr. Good Pastor, uh, he spent some time working for the ATF before he decided he wanted to become uh, a professor and share his knowledge with all of his students. He does really neat research and in arson investigations and, and drugs. We have Nick Manneke, who um, also is a, a, a chemist as well, and he does extraordinary research with like designer drugs and the ability to be able to detect drugs in, in various um, biological substrates. Uh, we have Dr. Susan Walsh, who is a biologist, a forensic biologist, and uh, she does really neat research where she looks at an individual's DNA to try to predict what they look like. It, it's called DNA phenotyping. And there's me who does some research with bugs, with insects. I, I do the forensic entomology side of things. Um, and so this is our full-time team. Um, and between um, us, we pretty much teach all of the forensic science classes that you would be taking. But we also have some associate faculty who teach in FIS because they need to round out some of the stuff that we can't do or teach. Um, so Adrian Kelly is an adjunct instructor um, and she is, is the microscopist, to be perfectly honest with you, as well as wildlife and veterinary forensics. So she adds that side of things. Carl Soborowski, who is currently the forensic director for the Indiana State Police, teaches a variety of classes for us and he's an amazing resource. We have two judges, one that sits on the Court of Appeals and one that's on the Superior Court. Um, who teach our, the law side of forensic science for us. And then, uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about some of the specialty classes that we offer, but John Kelly's an example. He's got 30 plus years as a crime scene investigator, and that's not something we've ever done. Um, so what we do is we bring in people who have done this job to be able to talk about the science behind the jobs that they're doing as well as Fran Watson. Um, she's a professor of law here at IUPUI. Um, and uh, Christina Bamer is the assistant director for the State Department of Toxicology. And toxicology is this sort of area between biology and chemistry in terms of forensics that neither of us, uh, both sides of, of the research faculty don't really focus on. So um, Dr. Bamer is really good at being able to bring that focus into toxicology for us. Um, I'm going to try to get through this. Hopefully I can. This would be something that Amy would talk about, but there are some required courses that you would take that are part of the School of Science experience that would include things that you would um, imagine. That includes math, of course. There's some computer science components. You do have to take chemistry, physics. Um, there are some arts and humanities courses that you could pick from, as well as social sciences, cultural understanding, and communications core. But also you would be taking this SCI 120, which is a Windows on Science class. And this is meant to orient you to the School of Science. And we offer forensic science Windows on Science classes. And so presumably you would come into one of those sections and you would learn what it's like to be a forensic science student and get to know your fellow um, classmates as well. So these are really great classes just to get you started. And you take that your very first semester. In terms of forensic science and what we require, um, all of our students, biology or chemists, have to take introductory biology. Um, all of our students have to take organic chemistry one and two, um, which can throw off some people, but I really like organic chemistry. Um, there are statistics classes, and then there are forensic science classes that you do have, all students have to take. So, we have introductory forensic science classes, which are 205, 206. You would take these as freshmen, and these are survey courses. They introduce you to all the variety that exists in forensic science. It's also a nice opportunity for you to learn the different disciplines to really decide what it is that you want to do. We have a professional issues class. Uh, forensic science, we are held to a very high standard. Um, because a lot of the work that we do can have drastic um, impacts on people in society. Um, and so there's an entire course that's dedicated to professional issues around forensic science that include dealing with the actual sort of trauma related to the cases that come in, as well as ethics um, that you would have as a forensic scientist. 
We have a really nice forensic microscopy class that includes a lab. Um, so you get to do all sorts of fun stuff that includes like bullet comparisons where you're looking in a comparison uh, microscope and you learn to use all these different microscopes. And our labs are outfitted so every student gets a, a microscope. You're not sharing with another student. And in part, that's because you're spending a lot of time looking in the microscope. Forensic science in the law that is taught by one of our judges um, and he is able to give the perspective from the lawyer and from the judges side and what an expert witness is and does, um, which is what you would be if you were a forensic science student. We have this brand new class, but I think it's a wonderful class that you would take as a as a junior and which is a professional capstone. This is to prepare you for your profession that is getting you through um, mock interviews, putting your resume together so that it's very tailored towards forensic science jobs or uh, applying for graduate schools uh, and other professional schools. So all of that gets incorporated into this class. And that gets you ready for your senior class, uh, your senior year, where you are going to start thinking about jobs and everything like that. And then we have a forensic science capstone and that's where we focus on the actual science within the forensics field. Um, and each of you do a project that's related to some aspect of forensic science. We have two concentrations. Uh, we have the forensic biology concentration or the forensic chemistry concentration. And these are the courses that you're um, required to take as well as uh, a number of electives that you can fill in. And what's nice is um, that these electives that you fill in can help you get that second degree within your four years. Um, if you fill in these electives with biology courses, if you're a forensic biology major, you can get your BS in biology at the same time that you get your BS in forensic biology. And similarly in chemistry. Um, and um, so, you know, more than half of our students easily do this. And in part, that is because of the advisor, Amy, who does a really good job at being able to juggle all of that um, and making sure that you can still get that second degree in four years. Um, but there is overlap between the degrees, of course, because even though this is a forensic biology degree, it really is a biology degree that has classes that focus on the application of forensics. So cell biology, biochemistry, genetics and molecular biology, these are biology classes um, and you will not hear about forensics in those classes, but when you start talking about population genetics and forensic biology one and two, it builds off of this foundation that you got through these classes to then really learn about how it gets applied um, in the forensics field and similarly the same thing with chemistry. So what about, what can you do after FIS, um, after you get your degree with us? And, um, you know, our students have been remarkably successful um, once they complete their degree. And so I'm gonna, this, this don't take any time reading this next slide because the words are written very small, but our students can go directly into the workforce after your four year degree, after you get your bachelor's of science and our students are all over the country in terms of, so the ones that I have highlighted here are forensic science specific jobs, which of course, this is what we're training you for. So we want you to get those uh, forensic science jobs, but also just lab jobs, because everything that you do and your learning experience throughout the program here prepares you for any of these chemistry or biology jobs. Because remember, many of the courses that you're taking are part of those degrees as well. Um, and there's a variety of other um, um, uh, industries that you are prepared to go into. Now, are you only prepared to go into the workforce after you finish um, the forensic science program? No, our students are going into lots of professional schools, including medical schools, law schools, um, getting PhDs and continuing research um, as well uh, and, and masters as well. And so there's a lot of opportunity for you after you complete this program to go on into any professional program um, that you might be interested in. Okay, so then of course, why, why forensics at IUPUI? You, you probably already know this, we are FEPAC accredited. 
which is a formal evaluation that our program goes through every five years. And that is to ensure compliance to standards for quality um, forensic science education. And this is pretty stringent um, in terms of what we have to demonstrate and what we're doing as a program. And we're only one of two public universities in the Midwest um, that is FEPAC accredited. So it's not just every school can do this. And what they're really looking for is that science background, the foundation in science, because it's so important to actual forensic science. Also our relationships. Um, you know, many of the people that teach some of these classes for us are belong to some of these services or, or labs around. So the Indiana State Police Lab, we've had a long history with them. Students um, are often doing internships there. Um, and many of our students end up getting jobs there as well. And as well as the Indiana State Department of Toxicology, I think the whole department is something like 80% FIS uh, related. Um, and um, so there's a lot of opportunity there as well as the Marion County Forensic Science Ser Service Agency and the coroner's office. Um, and then we have relationships with the, the three lettered agencies, the FBI, the DEA, the ATF. We have students that are either working in some of these places or have done internships in some of these places. And so they often will write to us and say, hey, do you have any students? We have this program coming up. And so that gets to go out to our students. So we've made these network connections through our, um, you know, 12, 13 years of being a program and, and graduating out these quality students that get these jobs and are then thinking about IUPUI for the future. And also because they know how, how robust the curriculum is here. And so they know that if they hire somebody from our program, they're gonna know what they're talking about. And finally, I want to just talk about one of the things that I think makes IUPUI Forensic Science unique and hopefully is something that you all look forward to. Um, but uh, we have these specialized classes. They're, they're shorter. They're one credit hour classes that you can take that we're going to help round out your education to explore different topics in forensic science that we don't necessarily cover during um, our regular curriculum. And this is just an example of some of them, but uh, an entire class on blood spatter analysis or on hazardous crime scenes. Like if you come across a meth lab, how do you deal with that? Oops, I'm um, sorry about that. Wildlife forensics, forensic document examination, veterinary forensics. We even have a special topics class where you get to go to the cadaver lab um, and look at specific soft tissue injuries and how that applies to forensics. Um, so every semester we offer three of these that and they change every every year every semester they change and we try to keep it um, sort of fresh if we can uh, with a variety of topics and with banded tuition at IUPUI it doesn't cost you anything extra to take one of these classes which I guarantee you you will enjoy um, because I've never heard any of these classes were not enjoyable just for the fun of it. But you can ask the student panel for sure and they'll be able to tell you more about that. So that's something that's exciting about our program and that I hope you look forward to and that some of these classes you can take as a freshman um, because some of them don't require some prereq. Some do, like for example, uh, designer drug analysis. You probably want to have a little bit of chemistry under your belt before you get into that one. Um, but some of them do not. And so we try to keep it um, as inclusive and as open as we can. So that's it for my presentation. And I really do hope that you'll have some questions for me and I'm equally hopeful I can answer them. Um, if not, hopefully our student panel can. <laughs> Great. Thank you, Christine. Uh, that was great information provided. We do have a couple of questions uh, already in the uh, Q&A section and everyone who's listening, if you have thought of anything you would like to have answered by Dr. Picard, please uh, definitely put it in there and, and we'll get to that. Uh, first question uh, is, can I be pre-med and FIS or and forensic science? Oh, yes. We've had many students of ours go off to medical school. So um, because of the, the curriculum that we offer, it's, it's essentially everything you would need to be uh, prepared for, for the standardized testing like the MCAT. And, and, and again, you can get both your biology and FIS degree. And so absolutely. 
And Dustin, uh, Dustin's one of our student panelists, and he did uh, ask to chime in on this. I'm going to let him introduce himself and, uh, and answer. Right. So like Lori said, my name is Dustin. So one of my friends is actually a pre-med student who is also studying forensic science. And she actually did just get into med school. So it is possible, especially if you want to become a pathologist, it does require that med school. So if that's a path you want to take. It's 13 years. So kudos to you if you want to do it. But it is very much possible. And like Christine said, it is pretty much built in. Uh, we also have a department called preps that likes to make sure you're hitting all those prereqs. So you'll learn a little bit about that before we will probably talk about it, or if not, I'll talk about it later on. <laughs> yeah, and just to add on to that a little bit, um, the prerequisites for medical school, uh, medical school doesn't care what major you are. You could be, you know, any major that is your passion, and that's what we would encourage you to do. But you're going to need to take those biology, the chemistry, the physics classes, um, and a few, you know, other classes here and there. And those are all included in the uh, forensics degree. So there's a few electives that you have to do in a certain uh, pattern in order to make it. But you can fulfill all of those prerequisites within this degree, which uh, makes it a really uh, good degree for pre-med students. Um, we have another question, Dr. Ricard, is what does FEPAC accreditation really mean? Hmm. So what it means is um, that any program that is accredited, again, has to follow a very specific set of standards um, to get accredited. And I can tell you, this country, I, I don't know what the number is at right now, maybe there's 30 or so accredited forensic science programs across the entire country, but there's probably like 150 forensic science programs across the country. They just cannot meet some of these standards. And some of these standards include um, the number of full-time faculty. So you cannot rely on outside people teaching um, your the students. You have to have people that are hired and and of course, have a, um, a, a have a desire to, to be there and teach and, and whatnot. Um, and then the curriculum is really important. And many other locations or other schools that are not PFAC accredited often fall short in some of the curricular um, activities. So hiring managers, when it comes to looking at jobs, will look upon PFAC accredited ed educations more favorably because they know what the requirements are to be PFAC accredited. So they'll know that you know your organic chemistry or that you know your uh, analytical chemistry or whatever, whatever it is that they're looking for. So there's a, a, a sort of built-in uh, credential that comes with getting a degree um, at a PPAC accredited school. Okay, and uh, Kate has a question. It says, what are the average class sizes? Great question. Um, so of course, when you are a freshman, uh, you are taking freshman biology, freshman chemistry, and those are in the School of Science probably four or 500 students. Lori or somebody else I'm might usually, I think it's a little that. less than that, but about 200, 250. Oh, okay. Wow, yeah. I'm way off. Um, <laughs> And then the, the intro forensic science class is right around 250 as well. So there's a lot of students that take that class. By the time you get into your junior and senior year, um, depending on which classes you're taking, but I can tell you in forensics, your classes will rarely be above 20 students. Um, and, um, and, and so these are small classes. Even we designed our labs to make sure that they could only um, fit a certain number of students to make sure that we have that um, you know, instructor to student ratio that is so necessary during some of the labs. And so as, as you come up, I, I, I can remember one year I taught the forensic biology class and I think I only had seven students in my class, which was really great because we really got to know each other. <laughs> And even just to add on a little bit to that, your freshman year, when you are in those larger classes, they do have uh, also recitations and labs in addition to those large lectures. And your recitations and labs are only going to have about 25 students in it. So it does give you a chance to talk to the instructor more one on one and get to know, you know, a, little, a smaller cohort of students who are in those classes with you. All right. Uh, Maria has a great question. Uh, can we take crime scene one in our freshman year? If it is offered that semester and in your freshman year, absolutely. So crime scenes are the ones that don't require any um, prerequisites. I think another one was the podcast class because I taught that one. So no prerequisites. Um, so there is a spattering of courses. And in fact, we try to do that each semester. There's at least one 
that is sort of open to everybody, one that might be a little bit more targeted towards chemistry and one that might be a little bit more targeted towards biology. So we do try to make sure that we have um, a pretty good um, offering of courses. Okay. And uh, Molly, yes, I'm currently a, uh, enrolled as a biology student, how do I become a double major with forensics? So I can answer that for you, Molly. You, you would need to apply as, if you're already a student at IUPUI, you would need to do our internal application to apply for that second major. Uh, but you can talk to your biology advisor about that and they can help you do that. If you're already uh, just an admitted student who's gonna be starting in the fall, uh, that's something, again, you can talk to your advisor about. You probably would want the forensics advisor to be your primary advisor, uh, just because there's a little bit of uh, tricks that you need to know as far as uh, which electives to take within biology to get that dual degree. Uh, but again, you could just go in and update uh, your application to change that to a forensics major. All right, uh, Angie asks, are we able to take more than one of the one credit hour classes in a semester? You bet. You can take as many as you want. Um, they are, depending on them, they're offered at different times and they're short little one credit hours. So sometimes it'll be like four Friday afternoons in the semester where it'll be a specific class. The crime scene classes are actually done on Saturdays um, and that's a full day uh, event because there's a lot of activities and everything that's built into that. Um, so those tend to be on Saturdays. Others might be an evening class. So it, it, it totally varies. But if you have time in your schedule, um, you absolutely can take as many of these as you want. They are considered um, some electives. All right, and Tamsin has a question that I, I do hear a lot. Um, kind of the difference between a forensics investigator in the lab and one out in the field. Like what, can they be both of them or is it usually one path or the other? What do most of our students do? That's a great question. Uh, most of our students end up being in the lab, um, and that's what we're training for. So the forensic um, lab jobs are, um, are, are pretty science heavy. I mean, you need to learn all of the molecular biology behind, um, you know, what, what makes a DNA profile, for instance, to be able to go in and analyze uh, evidence and then be able to present it in court because that's what you need to do as a forensic scientist. Um, and same thing on the chemistry side, you need to be able to use mass spectrometers and liquid chromatographers and to be able to understand how those work um, in order to present that evidence. Now, crime scene investigators, um, I think is there should be more science in there. I really do think so, because I think all of forensic science starts with the collection of the evidence. Um, but we've had students who've gone the crime scene route because that's what they really like. And I, I like that idea that we have some, some really good science students that are taking part in that process because not often um, they, you know, a lot of crime scene investigators might not necessarily have that science background. Uh, but most certainly we've had students that are doing that, that track. All right, and Eve, uh, your question is, can, I, uh, can a high school AP class in statistics, bio or chem or f physics, uh, is it accepted and what would be the minimum test score? So we do accept AP credits. Uh, there, there is on the admission site, there is a page that shows it. Normally to get credit for a specific class, you would need a four depending on it, but we do give elective credits for threes. Uh, if it's in biology and chemistry though, we do often um, you know, make you, we want you to think about it a little bit if you want to take those credits or if you do want to take those classes at the collegiate level, not only to begin with your cohort, but because it is taught a little bit different at the collegiate level. Uh, Dr. Picard, do you have any um, thing to add to that? Yeah, as far as I knew, I, I thought for sure we accepted AP credit, um, but I, I, I think your last statement about, um, you know, getting that sort of refresher and um, getting, uh, you know, building that cohort feeling with being in the biology and the chemistry class um, uh, would be, is, is advised, is well advised, I think, um, in the end. Um, you'll only get better. Yeah, and if you are thinking about something like medical school or PA school, uh, those schools normally do require that all of your science classes prerequisites be taken at the collegiate level. So you, that is something to think about too, if that might be in your plans. Here's a good question. Do most forensic students get a master's or PhD? Or do oh, they go that's a really good question. 
I would say most do not actually. Um, so some definitely go on and get a master's. Um, and what that does, because a lot of these forensic science jobs are government jobs, what that does is it gives you a bump in pay and whatnot um, in terms of seniority if you have the master's because government jobs will look at your degrees. Um, but, but a lot of our students straight out of our undergrad go on and do work. The number of students that go on and get PhDs is way smaller. Uh, we definitely wish it was higher. <laughs> uh, we would love to see more students getting PhDs in forensic science. And if you're interested in a PhD, I would suggest forensic science because uh, the job market's really hot um, for forensic science and the competition's quite low. And so um, it's a great opportunity. So if that's something that you're interested in, um, you know, definitely stick with forensics. Okay, and we've got a lot of other questions to answer, but, and uh, some of them are for, for Dr. Picard, but many of them I think our students will have some really good perspectives on. So I would like our student uh, panelists to uh, show your screen now and in, we're gonna have you introduce yourselves. Uh, we'll go in alphabetical order. So Dustin, Haley, and then Samantha, just tell us a little bit about who you are and uh, your IUPUI experience and what you know your future plans are. Sure, so since I am the first one, I'll go. My name is Dustin Ryder. I'm a senior studying forensic science and biology. I'm from South Bend, Indiana, which is about two and a half hours north of Indy. Goal-wise, I plan on joining the Army Reserves and then eventually working my way up to the director position for State Crime, State crime Lab. And I, I've enjoyed my experience at IUPUI very much. And I actually know Sam and Haley. They're really great friends of mine. So it's, you get to know everybody in your major. Hi everyone, my name is Haley. My pronouns are she, her, hers. Um, I am a senior here at IUPUI. I am doing both uh, forensic biology and forensic chemistry concentrations in the FIS program. And I'm also getting degrees in general biology and general chemistry. So like Dr. Picard mentioned before, it's really easy to do it all. I am proof of that. If I can do it, I promise you can too. Um, I am an out of state student. So I'm actually from Joliet, Illinois, which is a suburb of Chicago. So um, I actually came to IUPUI because it is FEPAC accredited and there are none in Illinois. So got to rep that FEPAC accreditation. And yeah, like Dustin said, it's a really great program and I'm happy to talk about it with you guys. And my name's Samantha. I'm, I'm a junior studying forensics and chemistry. Um, and then I'm also minoring in biology. Um, I have, I grew up in, have always lived in Indianapolis, so I commute to school. Um, so if you have any questions about that, I can definitely answer those too. Um, trying to think. I want to be a science teacher, so I'm kind of going a different route than Haley and Dustin um, are going, but uh, nonetheless, you know, I'm still taking all forensic science as my true passion, so I hope to be able to teach that someday. Um, and then I've also been really involved um, on our campus with like undergraduate like teaching um, opportunities and um, I've also joined a sorority so um, I don't know I've been pretty involved with like on-campus activities so if you have any questions about that I can also answer those. Okay and just to get back to our questions we're getting a lot of them coming in so this is exciting. Uh, Haley I think uh, you would be a good person to answer this question. Uh, what are the main differences between honors classes and normal classes? Okay, awesome. So I personally am not in the Honors College. I will disclose that ahead of time. But I am a resident assistant in the STEM RBLC that we were talking about before. And a lot of my residents are actually in the Honors College. So I've been there to help along the process because it's quite I wouldn't say quite a bit of work, but it is definitely an extra step that you can take. It's like a privilege to be in the Honors College. Um, the way that it works for most classes is that you work with the professor for that course um, every semester and you do what's called an honors contract. So it's like an additional piece to go alongside the typical curriculum with the syllabus. So um, I know right now one of my best friends, she's doing an honors contract for our forensic genetics class. So her additional piece is that she actually researched a topic all semester and now towards the end of the semester she's going to be presenting on that topic to our class kind of like as a guest lecturer. Um, so that's like one part like 
part of the Honors College. Um, like I said, there's lots of perks associated with being in the Honors College. You have your own personal study space in the basement of the library, which is really cool. I'm always jealous that I've never been able to go in there, but they have their own little thing going on in there. And yeah, basically just being in the Honors College means that you are doing just an extra step to whatever the general curriculum is involved in the course, if that makes sense. And just to add on to what Haley's saying, not all of the classes that you have to take for Honors uh, College need to be science classes, half of them do, but the other half can be in any area that you are interested in and would like to, uh, to learn a little bit more about. All right, uh, Ashley will ask if Calc 1 and Calc 2 from Ivy Tech suffice for IUPUI FS math requirements. So Ashley, uh, some students do bring in uh, those classes. It would depend on the act specific class to how it transfers in, but we do have a transfer rule catalog that if you email me, I, I would be happy to send to you that'll show you how uh, those classes will transfer in. Um, Angie asked, what placement test do we need to take for the FIS major? Uh, I took the placement test survey on the IUPUI website and it told me I needed to take the math placement test, but I wasn't sure if that was correct. Now, um, I'll, you know what, I can answer that. So Angie, um, most of the sci our science students will take um, both a math and a chemistry placement exam because we do wanna make sure that you're being placed uh, in the correct uh, math class. We don't want you to start a calculus class and, and not be prepared for that. So uh, we will always start you at the level that you are, uh, are going to be successful at and then build up to that. So some students will start right into uh, calculus for the life sciences. Some students will start at more of a pre-calc level and what that math placement test does ensure that you're starting uh, at the pace that you're gonna be successful. Uh, I did wanna add a little bit about the chemistry placement exam. Uh, because the chemistry placement exam is challenging and you can only take it once. Uh, so I always like to let students know that there's a practice exam on there and encourage you to take that practice exam first. And then if you want to do a little bit of studying, go ahead and do that. But sit down at, you know, give yourself a quiet place with, uh, you know, some time. And when you are taking that chemistry exam, because that will decide what chemistry class you start at at IUPUI. So it is super important. Uh, whereas the math exam is also important, but you can take that up to five times. So if you wanna just take it the first time, you know, out of the blue, see where you are, and then it'll show you what areas you did not score as well. And so if you wanted to study and take it again, you can. Uh, but the chemistry exam is a one and done. So that's super important. Uh, if you wanted to take a, uh, a world language while you're here, then there is a world language uh, placement exam as well. It's not required for the forensics major, but you know some students still choose to do that. So that, that would be another option for placement exams. All right. Uh, how many different topics can you major in in your four years of studying at IUPUI? Uh, the answer is two <laughs> in forensics. So it's forensic chemistry or forensic biology. And then uh, are there any study abroad opportunities for forensic science students? So forensic science does not offer a specific forensic science only study abroad. I want to do that. I would love to see that. Um, but uh, there are study abroad programs in biology for sure. Are there in, I, I don't know if you guys know if there are in chemistry. Yes. So the, the other bigger departments have, have that sort of, um, um, built in, but um, I'd love to get one together for forensic science. And just yeah, to, and just to, to oh, I was gonna say, just to add on to that too, there are a lot of times students will take a lot of their gen ed requirements for that, or like even like English or really any arts and humanity credit too. Yeah, we had a student in our office who was actually a math major, but she, she did her uh, study abroad in Greece and she helped make tourism videos. So it did uh, cover a lot of her gen ed requirements and it was a really great experience for her. Um, to, someone asked, to be a forensic pathologist, do students typically go into the biology or chemistry route before they go into medical school? And Dustin, it, you indicated you might wanna answer this one. Sure, so it really just depends on again, what you're passionate about, because either way, mm -hmm. you're going to meet the prereqs to get into that med school. So if you really like biology, go biology route. If you really like chemistry, go the chemistry route. My friend is doing the biology route because she prefers biology. And also to her, that kind of will give her a little bit of an advantage, especially if she wants to take like anatomy and physiology courses, things like that. So again, it really just depends on what you want to pursue and how you want to pursue it. 
And Laura asks, can all of your honors classes be in the science field? And Laura, if, if you would like to do that, absolutely. Uh, there is a way to do that. Honors classes, um, there are some that are just offered to you. And then there's others that you can make into an honors class by doing an honors contract with the professor and your honors advisor. So when you go through orientation through the honors college, they will definitely give you all that information and let you know uh, what you'd have to do. Um, and then there was a question from, again from Laura, can you provide the link for the practice test for chemistry? So that will be offered to you uh, through the orientation modules and uh, the orientation site for committed students, it is open now. So if you go to orientation.iupy.edu, you can start uh, your orientation. And at the end of that is when you'll meet with your advisor and uh, be able to schedule your classes. So, you know, again, we, we always recommend that science students do that as early as they can, just so that you have the largest selection of classes and lab times that, you know, that tend to fit your schedule. Uh, when do you take the placement tests? So again, um, Fabia, that is again a part of the orientation process. So when you uh, are, you have to be a committed student to uh, sign up for orientation. So the first thing you would have to do is go in and accept your admission to IUPUI. Uh, normally that there's a couple of days uh, lag time before it will then allow you to go into orientation and sign up. But it will give you a list of the placement tests that you need to take. And once you are started in that process, you can take them. You don't need to take them right away, but you would want to have them done at least a week before meeting with your uh, advisor so that your advisor can help you sign up for the correct classes. Um, are internships required for forensics majors? They are not required. Uh, is there a cadaver lab on campus? Oh, Haley, do you oh, want yeah, more? to say something to internships? I was just going to say they're not required, but I really recommend them. Okay. If you have the time, please do one. I did a internship with my local coroner's office back in Illinois, but I was able to get like credit for it here. You can do an actual like where you take it for credit over the summer and you get like that towards your degree. I really recommend it. Internships look awesome on your applications for like if you plan on going to graduate school, they're good for resumes too. So they're not required, but I recommend them. Yes, thank you for saying that. Um, absolutely, and, and they can count for credit. So we have a special internship class that is just for that. And you can work with our science preps office. They, uh, they will give you access. All of our students have access to the Handshake database where you can upload your resume. You can search for internships all over the country. And if with your resume up there, they can find you as well. So, you know, it, they make it almost as easy as they can for you. You just have to, you know, do a little bit of the legwork yourself. Uh, Dustin, is there a cadaver lab on campus? Yes, there is. And I saw a question previously asking about how quickly the one credit hour classes fill up. And again, this is really going to depend on what it is. But everybody loves tissue injury for the fact that we go to the cadaver lab. <laughs> so that one will, you'll see it kind of fill up a little bit faster than the other ones. I was really lucky and I got into it, I think like two or three years ago. And we did go to the cadaver lab. We actually got to tour it and everything like that. The professor who teaches it, Professor Yard, is such a wonderful and amazing person. Haley is shaking her head yes, because everybody always has good things to say about that man. But he'll also like sometimes call the students at 3 a.m. and be like, hey, there's a case going on. Do you want to go see it? Things like that. So you get really good opportunities with it. But to, to kind of round it off, yes, we do have a cadaver lab. And if you take that tissue injury class, there is a chance you'll be able to go and see it. I just got, um, I wanted to talk to Samantha a little bit. Samantha, you had mentioned uh, previously about, um, about a study abroad that a lot of forensic students do that. Uh, can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, it was um, actually, I had talked to, if you're interested in doing a study abroad um, or studying abroad, then you can definitely talk to the first person I would go to besides like the scholarship office we, or scholarship office, study abroad office we have on campus um, is uh, your professor, or your, Professor, I can't talk. Um, advisor, Amy Mighty, she knows a ton of those um, study abroad study abroad opportunities that would go right in with your, um, you know, four year plan that she'll help you make. Um, but one of the ones that I had looked into early on, like around my freshman year, was um, I believe it was going to Ireland, and it's an anthropology one. And I remember somebody coming into one of my classes, the, I think the guy who is in charge of it um, and talking about how they do it um, every so often. And I think at one point they even did like a, uh, 
they exhumed some bodies or something out there. So, you know, that's like more, there are some that are geared more towards um, forensic science students. So those are always uh, good to look out for, but Amy definitely can assist in finding the um, best ones that, you know, would in fit your interests and also fit in with your class schedule the way, you know, and she'll help you work around that too. And a lot of students <laughs> do a summer program or even a spring break program. Uh, so it doesn't, you know, it's easier to work into your schedule than having to to do it during the school year. And our study abroad office at IUPUI does have access to all of the IUPUI programs, all of the IU programs, all the Purdue programs. And if you go there with a specific interest, they'll even search some other programs for you to see if they can uh, line up just the right uh, program for you. Uh, Angie, you asked the perfect question for our guests. What are some of the activities that the FIS club does? Because we have the S FIS club president here in Haley. So Haley, I'm gonna let you answer that question. Awesome, thank you. Yes, I am the president this year, very proud of that. I was the vice president last year and I was a member two years before that. So I got four years of forensic science club experience for you. Um, every year is a little bit different this year, especially because you know, COVID. We've been doing things virtually for the most part. Um, one thing that is consistent every year, we mentioned it briefly before, is the annual murder mystery dinner, which is my favorite thing. It is a life-size and interactive game of Clue. Basically, we set up this entire like two hour event where you can come and you can eat dinner for free and you get to basically just watch the members of Forensic Science Club put on a like a theater for you, a little show. And so they act out this big scenario. This year we're doing the Salem witch trials as the theme for it. So um, we'll have actors playing killers, playing victims, playing people just on the side and basically you go through it and you try to solve the murder before the end of the night and you get to sit there and eat dinner and it's a really cool experience. Um, this year it's going to be streamed virtually which like I said we have to adapt but yeah next year they're hoping to do it in person sadly I won't be here I'll be graduating but you know a really great time. Um, besides that though, we often have different um, professors and professionals in the field of forensic science come in and speak with us. Um, we mentioned Professor Yard earlier. He was actually with our um, club, I guess, last week. He talked about some of the like tissues and all that. He showed us different videos that he actually had of autopsies that he's completed. And um, kind of like Dustin mentioned, the spur of the moment 3 a.m. calls to his students. After our meeting was over, he was like, hey, by the way, um, if anyone wants to go check out the cadaver lab after this, uh, meet me in the lecture hall and we'll go. And so I had like six of my members just randomly go to the cadaver lab on a Wednesday afternoon. So like, that's something you have to look forward to. But we've also had presentations on wildlife forensics, hazardous crime scenes. So like those one hour credits that you can take, we often have the professors for those credits come in and give like a quick overview, of whatever the topic would be for that semester. So if you can't get into one of those classes, you might be able to still get a little bit of it at a weekly forensic science club meeting. And that is my plug because it is a great club highly recommended and I'm not at all biased, you know. And Haley, Maria wants to know, how do you get into the FIS club? Wonderful question. Um, anyone can be a member of the Forensic Science Club. You don't necessarily have to be a forensic science major. So just putting that out there, but we have something called the DEN. Is it still the DEN? It's, no, it's the SPOT now. It's called the SPOT. So it's an online website. You go to the SPOT at IUPUI and that has the list of every single club on campus as well as the different events they have going on. So you just sign up with your email and then I click approve and then you're in the forensic science club and you get weekly emails telling you all about the club so super simple super easy no requirements uh, and one question we have is i've been interning with the local police department with the detectives and have worked with a forensics pathologist who has taken me to several autopsies could i potentially get credits so the answer to that is potentially uh yes but we can't do them in arrears if, if it is something you want to get credit for, you would uh, work with, uh, you know, with your advisor, with the preps department to get it approved uh, beforehand. So if you're going to do that over the summer, you know, if you go back home or, or during the school year, it is something that you could get credit for. And you would just need to talk to them about that and have that arranged. Uh, Dustin, did you have anything to add to that? No. Okay. Um, if you want to pursue the crime scene investigation route, can you do that through IUPUI? And what would that process look like? Samantha, do you have something you'd like to add to that? 
Um, yeah, I was gonna say, um, as Dr. Picard had said earlier, um, some of our like forensic science students have gone on to become crime scene, crime scene investigators just because um, they're starting to look for more of that uh, science background and they think that is valuable as she mentioned before. Um, my boyfriend actually is a crime uh, criminal justice major at IUPUI and he is also interested in that. Um, but what the general consensus he has heard is if you end up going that route, um, he's getting a minor in forensics so that will help him out a little bit there. Um, but what if you do go that route, then you're looking more at becoming a um, sworn in officer and then <laughs> becoming a crime scene investigator. Whereas um, sometimes if you're just a, you get your forensic science degree and go that route, you might not necessarily have to do that. So um, it that you know, if I were to want to become a crime scene investigator, that would be something that I would care about because I don't necessarily think I could fill, fulfill all the requirements of a sworn in <laughs> officer, but um, but yeah, that is something to think about. Yeah, if I could just, just say, if you get your forensic science degree, you can be a crime scene investigator, you can be a forensic scientist, you have all these options, whereas if you go another route, your options are a little bit more limited. And I did want to say, uh, Dr. Picard is going to need to leave us in a couple of minutes because she has a, something else she needs to attend to. So thank you so much, Dr. Picard. Is there anything that you wanted to say before you leave? Uh, I just wanted to say that I look forward to hopefully meeting you in person um, eventually um, in the fall semester. And if anybody has any questions, please email me directly. Um, and I think Lori can maybe share my email. Um, with any question at all. And if I don't know the answer, I'll find out who does know the answer and I'll get back to you. But otherwise, have a great day and um, and thanks for coming. All right, thank you. And our students will be here for a few more minutes. So if you do have any other questions, feel free to put them in the chat. Um, I had a few questions that, um, well, actually, we, uh, that I wanted to ask. Now, we've got both uh, students who have lived on campus and students who have commuted here. And I like to talk a little bit about the IUPUI experience in both realms and how you get involved. So, Haley, uh, first, you've lived on campus and now you're an RA. Can you talk a little bit about what that experience has been like? Sure, definitely. Um, so I have lived on campus technically all four years. I lived as a resident my freshman and sophomore year, and then I've been an RA this year and the previous year. I was an out-of-state student, so it was really just the best option for me because one of my main concerns coming to a college out of state was, am I going to have any friends, <laughs> which I know is kind of sad if you think about it, but like I was like, ah, yes, if I go live on campus, built-in friend, I will have a roommate. And a fun fact, my freshman year roommate, still one of my best friends, so definitely great there. And then um, an option when you live on campus is to be in those RBLCs that we talked about, specifically the STEM RBLC, which is what I am an RA for. And that's basically an entire floor on one of our residence halls, North Hall, that is dedicated to first year STEM majors. So that is like all different fields, not necessarily forensic science, but a great thing is since you're surrounded by all these people who are in the same majors as you, especially your freshman year, you're all taking similar courses so it's also like built-in friends, built-in study buddies. It's a great experience. I love living on campus. Obviously, I wouldn't have done it all four years if I didn't, but all around, it was just the best option for me. And if you're an out-of-state student, I definitely think it would be the best option for you. And even if you're in-state and you're from farther away, like Dustin, when up in South Bend, it's really great just to have that like built-in community here to support you in your freshman year. And again, I just wanted to mention housing is still available. We're normally full at this point of the year, but I think students were holding out a little bit to see if we were coming on campus in the fall. But now that it has been announced that we will be on campus, it is starting to fill. So if you haven't uh, put down your deposit, it's a $50 deposit and you just do it on the housing.iupui.edu website. But you know what, you don't have to live on campus to have a, a very fulfilling IUPUI experience. And I, Samantha, I, can you talk a little bit about your experience? Because I know you have been commuting now for three years, but you're very involved in campus. Can uh, Would you like to share? Yeah, absolutely. So a lot of people um, are kind of hesitant, especially when they're freshmen to commute because they think they might be missing out a little bit on that college experience. And I will say that at least at IUPUI, 
Um, I can tell you can be as little to as much involved as you would like to, as you're comfortable with on our campus. So there are so many, so many opportunities that you can get involved in. Um, obviously, like I'm in a sorority, we don't have um, sorority houses. So that's, you know, unique to IUPUI. Um, but I, and I've been able to be a part of forensic science club before. And um, I, you know, getting, getting involved in science ambassadors and everything else. Um, I've been able to manage that. And I think the key to that, if you want to be involved and make more friends and um, have, you know, a little bit more to put on your resume is just putting yourself out there and actually making the time to go to events and, um, and, you know, those club meetings and everything, because sometimes I think if you're a commuting student, it can be really easy to kind of fall into a routine of getting up at 8 a.m., getting to class by 9 a.m., and then going home at 4, and then just like, you know, doing that day by day. But if you know, you know, Forensic Science Club has a meeting on Tuesday nights, then you can um, you maybe stay and hang out with a friend or go to the library and study um, after your classes are over for the day and, you know, stay for that club meeting and then you know, make that part of your routine if you want. Um, and just, you know, try to try to branch out a little bit because I think it's what you make of it. Um, and, you know, four years goes by really fast. I can say just yesterday, I feel like I was a freshman and I'm about to start my senior year in the fall. So um, it's really, yeah, it's, it's what you make of it. So I would encourage you to get involved as early as you can if that's something you think you wanna do because um, it goes by really fast. All right, Dustin, did you have anything to add? Yeah, for sure. So I've commuted all four years that I've been here. Uh, so really, IEPUI is great at making sure their commuters feel obviously at home, like they have a place here. So this week is actually commuter week, I found out through the IEPUI Instagram. So what that means is they're holding events for commuters. I know one of them is like creating a keychain tag and so on and so forth. And they've got like a car kit that you can get. So again, there are plenty of opportunities for you to stay involved and get involved and everything like that. And IEPUI, again, is a strong believer of making you feel very welcome, however they can. Yeah. And Alex, you had asked a question that Haley did give you a great answer to, but I wanted to add on a little bit to that. Uh, you said, should I apply to the North Tower as a freshman? Just confirming. You can apply to whatever residence hall you feel is the best fit for you. We've got freshmen in all four of our residence halls. We've got science students in all four of our residence halls. We tend to talk a lot about North Hall because we do have the STEM floor there and a lot of science students do choose to live there because it's also the closest uh, residence hall to the School of Science. Uh, University Tower is just a little bit further down the street. Ball Hall is a little bit further. And then the Riverwalk Apartments is about a 15 minute walk, but it's more apartment style living. So it's a, a different type of atmosphere. So, you know, we just really recommend you decide what's best for you and uh, that you apply for what's best for you. Uh, so Laura asked if I already ha uh, have put my deposit in, is there anything else I need to do to commit to IUPUI and to get set up for orientation? And the answer is no, all you have to do is go to the orientation website at orientation.iupui.edu and uh, you start your orientation process. Uh, you'll do those online modules and then you'll uh, meet with an O team leader and then eventually you'll meet with your advisor who would be Amy Mighty and she would help you uh, sign up for your classes for for the fall. What we're hoping is that we're going to have a bridge event in August for our incoming freshmen. Uh, so that will bring you on campus so that you'll be able to walk around, see where your classes are going to be, get to know some other students. Uh, but all that, that has not been figured out uh, what they're going to do yet. But keep checking your email uh, because that information will be following. I, I did want to talk a little bit about research because I know we really talk about how research is a core experience here at IUPUI. And some students get involved their freshman year. Some students get involved their senior year. You can never, you know, there's not a timeline. Uh, Dustin, can you talk a little bit about your experience in research? Absolutely. So I am the student that got involved their senior year. So my research is actually done under Dr. Picard, who you guys saw earlier. So there are so many amazing re like areas of research that Dr. Picard is leading regarding entomology. And right now we're currently researching an artificial diet for blowfly larvae. So the diet consists of whole milk powder, dried yeast, uh, wheat germ, and propionic acid, which is being used as a mold inhibitor. So a lot of times you're gonna find me in the fly room that we have. Uh, so really what I'm doing in there is I'm placing the eggs on the diet. So again, that's where you're gonna find all our flies at. So it's a really great opportunity that I'm really thankful that I got involved in, even though it was my senior year. 
Now, Dr. Picard is a really great leader and she meets with the students one-on-one -on -one to kind of discuss what's going great in the lab and kind of what's really not working. And actually we would, we would typically meet on this Wednesday, but it is a wellness day. So again, it's a weekly meeting that we have. Now, there are also like a variety of other areas of research and forensics. And Dr. Picard did kind of touch on those earlier with like Dr. Walsh's research and then Dr. Manneke. So a lot of the research in the school of science as well is very interdisciplinary. So if you find something that you're really passionate about for research, so like Dr. Mr. Mars, he's doing fetal alcohol syndrome in zebrafish. If that's something you're really passionate about, you really just gotta reach out to those professors. There's plenty of opportunities for research. All right, Dustin, you need to explain the Dr. Mr. Mars. <laughs> All right, so we have a wonderful married couple here in the biology department. So we have Dr. And Mrs. Mars, who you guys will actually get to meet your freshman year. She teaches biology 101. She is this small little petite lady who is just so wonderful. Everybody, like when they hear her name, gets so excited and so happy about her. And she's just brilliant to say the least. Now her husband is Dr. Mr. Mars. So sometimes you'll hear people say Dr. Mr. Mars and Dr. Mrs. Mars as a distinction between the two. And Dr. Mr. Mars is heavily involved with research and he's mostly dealing with the 300 level biology courses. So Haley also again did that individual research with him. So yeah, you get plenty of ideas about that. So if you typically would wanna meet Dr. Mr. Mars that's going to be your higher level uh, biology courses. And then Mrs. Dr. Mrs. Mars is going to be your freshman year. All right. And you don't have to get involved in research the same way Dustin did. Another way that students do get involved in research, research is through their capstone projects. And Haley, I know that's how you got involved in research can, with Dr. Uh, Mr. Mars. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that? Yes. So um, almost, I think every major requires a capstone at this point. And part of that capstone is usually doing something like along the lines of an individual project or like something towards a professional project. And so for me, I chose to do individual research. So I didn't necessarily work in Dr. Mr. Mars's lab. Um, he does uh, fetal alcohol syndrome in zebrafish like Dustin mentioned. And I was interested in that, but I just had a lot of things going on and I couldn't really commit to the 10 hours a week in a lab that he needed. And so he gave me the opportunity to do individual research alongside him. So basically, I picked my own topic and I started researching it and then uh, he was there as kind of like an advisor to help me along with the process and he actually helped me try to get my paper published. It was not, but that's okay. No hard feelings. Um, but yeah, I was able to choose my own like topic. So I chose my Corazai, which is I don't need to go into my research. It's it's for fungus and bacteria and plants. It's okay. Um, but the point is, uh, it's something that you can direct yourself and then have more of like an advisor as like a professor as an advisor on your research. You don't necessarily have to work in a lab working on a project that's already been established. You can go your own way with it. Right, and there's lots of other research opportunities similar to that. We've got a life health science internship that's for sophomores and juniors if you're interested in a health profession type of career. Uh, and those positions are within the School of Medicine, the School of Public Health, uh, some of the hospitals on campus, the School of Dentistry. We've got a program that's a multidisciplinary research project where you work with people from other schools on, on a research uh, topic. We've got um, an individual uh, Europe program where it you get to do something similar to Haley, but you can get a stipend along with it and work on your own uh, project alongside of a, an experienced researcher. So there, there are a ton of opportunities. Uh, you know, not all students choose to get involved in research during their time here, but it is available to you, uh, you know, if you wanted to. And it's just a really good way to, uh, again, see how what you're learning in the classroom is, is applied to the real world. And uh, it's actually very rewarding uh, if you do get involved. Um, I did want to answer a, one more question in the Q&A. Uh, is it better to apply for early admissions or wait until the first semester of senior year in high school? Uh, so our application uh, for juniors of this year will open up on August 1st. I recommend you apply uh, early uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, if you're interested in Honors College, that deadline is November 15th. So that's a very early deadline uh, to do that. And you can get that information uh, given to you and see if Honors College is for you. Uh, the other reason is there are some School of Science scholarships that you can apply for including the Dean of Scott Science Scholarship that we automatically will consider you for if you apply before November 15th. Uh, there are some other ones that you can apply for on your own uh, through our scholarship portal. 
uh, and those the deadline for those is December 31st. So the earlier you apply, the more scholarship opportunities that are going to be available to you. So I do uh, recommend that you know you get in there you know sometime after, soon after August 1st, you know September 1st, and uh, and apply for those. Uh, now I do want to be respectful of everybody's time because we are running a little bit over, um, but I did want to give you all kind of a final platform here to just talk about you know what what what, what is it about I brought you to IUPUI and what's making you what made you stay at IUPUI, and we'll, again we'll just go in alphabetical order. Sure, I actually I adore this question. It's one of my favorites. So originally I was obviously drawn into IUPUI because it's VPAC accredited. That's something that as a forensic scientist or a potential forensic scientist that you're going to be looking for. So in Indiana, I am an Indiana resident. Having that in-state tuition was a big draw for me. However, the people and the opportunities are really what made me stay. I actually applied for University of Tampa as well, and I had really great scholarship opportunities there. But for Indianapolis, like at IUPUI, having that downtown location and having professors who actually have worked in the field really have kind of solidified the fact that I'm very, very happy that I decided to stay here. And again, I've made some really great friends here. So I don't know, the environment, the opportunities, and again, those people really make the difference. And I'm very happy that I ended up staying at EPY. Um, I'm going to kind of echo Dustin because he really covered all those bases. So good for you, Dustin. Um, I think the thing that really drew me to IUPUI actually is I toured IUPUI as a junior in high school when I was like going around looking for like different campuses. There was three different colleges I was looking at, one here, one in Wisconsin, one in Ohio, because there were none in Illinois with a four-year forensic science program. Um, and honestly, IUPUI was like the best one by a landslide. Like I could tell that the person giving the tour was like actually really proud to be a part of the school, which was great. Um, and it wasn't like that fake enthusiasm, like I'm getting paid to be here. Like she seemed genuinely excited to be there. And I actually got to tour a couple of the labs when I was here, which was really cool. And I got to see people working in the lab and that's what I eventually wanted to do. So she just knew me, she sold me, that's what it was. That's what got me here. And I stayed for the people too. I made so many friends here so quickly, especially in the forensic science program. It's one of the smallest programs like here in the school of science, but like, that made it so much better for me because I got to know everybody who is in my year and in years above me. And honestly, yes, the people, the opportunities, that's what kept me here, so. Um, my best friend in high school, who was three years older than me, actually used to be in the forensic science program here. So when I was a freshman, she kind of, um, or I guess at the beginning of my sophomore year, she was a freshman here. So um, she, I got to kind of live through her a little bit, see what was what it was all about. I was really excited that forensic science even existed because um, I didn't, you know, really learn about that a whole lot in school. I didn't know that was like an actual path. So I was so stoked that that was, you know, an option and it was, you know, FEPAC accredited and near where I lived. Um, so it made sense for me in that way. Um, but really when I was, you know, trying to pick out which college I wanted to go to, um, all of that really drew me in. Um, but when ultimately when I was trying to decide between schools, it was between this one and another one. And the other school I wanted to go to only had like two programs that I was really interested in. And I was like, okay, well, let's look at IUPUI. And the School of Science, first of all, has a huge footprint on our campus. We're the largest uh, school on IUPUI's campus. Um, and I will say it has, um, the School of Science has their crap together compared to a lot of other science schools um, at a lot of other universities. I was very impressed um, when I was, you know, going on tours and everything. Um, and then when I looked at all the degrees and even um, the programs that were outside of the School of Science, there were so many where I was like, oh, that would be cool. Like I could do that. So I knew, and I've always heard from my friends and my parents, like um, a lot of people end up changing their major when they're in college and that's totally fine. You know, it's like the average, like amount of times somebody changes their majors like crazy. I forget um, what it is, but I knew that no matter where I ended up, I would have a place that I would, that would set me on the right career path at IUPUI. There were just so many options that I knew I would be happy doing, you know, whatever that was, whether it was st sticking with forensic science, which I ultimately did, or going on to like 
clinical lab science or like, I don't know, biology, chemistry, those kind of things. So um, obviously I found my my little niche here um, at IUPUI and I've, you know, created so many great memories and friends and everything. So um, that's, that's why I stayed. All right. Great answers from all three of our panelists. And I want to thank Dustin, Haley, and Samantha for being here today. Your advice has uh, been very good. And I want to thank all of our attendees today. We really do appreciate your time uh, on this Wednesday afternoon. Wanted to encourage you to come and visit us if you haven't already. The, really the best way to see if IUPUI and, and the School of Science is a fit for you is to visit. Uh, we do have science tours on Thursdays and Fridays and uh, campus tours every, every day of the week. So on our admissions site, you can sign up for those or come to our science visit page. And uh, we, we have links out to all of that information. And if you are an admitted student, we did send out an admitted student web page to you um, not too long ago. And you can go on and you can claim one of our uh, science t-shirts like uh, similar to what Dustin is wearing. Uh, it, we kind of, we jokingly call it our uniform, but in reality, uh, we love them. They kind of create community and it is nice to see a fellow science student on campus uh, with you. So that being said, uh, you know, thank you again for showing up and I hope that you all have a great day and we do hope to see you on campus soon.